let's start here. I started this monologue at two in the morning. I couldn't sleep, and when real men can't sleep, real men do the news. I immediately stopped the original monologue and diverged into a rage. MSN comes out with an article, Joe Biden is confident that Bernie Sanders supporters will fall in line. That language, fall in line, was my trigger point. Biden says, if I'm the nominee, I'm confident Bernie will push his supporters to support me just as I would if it were reversed, the former vice president told donors late Thursday. He's poured his heart and soul into this. He's made some significant changes in the American politics that have been positive. All in line. My intention here is not to imbue myself and the people of similar cause with an inflated self-importance or cosmic purpose. My wife says I have a tendency towards describing the mundane in grand sweeping dramatic terms. The fact is, though, that some things do trend towards the epic and scale. Whether our bearing is chosen in some incorporeal space, whether it's accepted in parental and cultural upbringing, or whether it's chosen in an affirmative path to more rational world, we on the left are bound as the living conscience of this nation and in further extension, this world. Considering the gravity of our charge and what's at stake, we should be lions. We ache for what this world is in comparison to what this world could be. We're a curse with the realization that life, the world order, is not appointed by a dystopian God, but by a political and economic system that is organized to cater to oligarchs versus utilizing the resources of this nation for the people that produces the resources of this nation. I'm not asking for anything radical in as much as the sensible, the rational, providing that the goalpost is a society where a person is honored as intrinsically valuable not because God says so, but because we as a collective and as a society deem it so. What does your world look like without homeless, with a healthcare system that everyone is covered, where every person in this country has an education and can get an education without the hindrance of tens of thousands of dollars of debt on their backs? Imagine a situation where everyone that chooses to get an education to the degree that they choose, talk about removing the hindrances to innovation and creativity, even under a capitalistic system that is possible. Imagine the products, the new technologies, the advances, when cash is no longer a barrier to progress. None of this is impossible. It must be understood that this is not an issue of resources. This is entirely an issue and purely an act of cultural, ideological, and political will within a society to make it so. I've said this before because it is infinitely true. From a purely corporeal point of view, there is no point to this existence. I won't be arrogant to say that God is dead, but I'll certainly he certainly hasn't made an appearance in any real capacity where it could be part of the conversation. This is terrifying in some sense, the notion that there is no higher order. You are living in a godless world, boy, to take a word from supernatural. The truth is that each of us, sane or otherwise, individuated unit of consciousness make their reality make their own reality. As a society, we define a general way of interaction and organization. This, by extension, also means that how we organize ourselves, how we set up our government, what the government prioritizes, is not an issue of right or wrong, it is an issue of what do you require that particular edifice to accomplish. This is the ultimate, there is no ultimate point beyond our choice, explicit or implicit, we choose. The point, is that in a reality space where there is no point, no right or wrong in organizing, the overwhelming majority of us toil away our products of our labor, transformed into cash and expropriated to the top, while we persist persistently vulnerable, paying taxes to a government that attends to the needs of the wealth of the nation. Why is this our lot? And realizing this, why should it continue to be so? Do we believe that people have value or not? Should the government not be organized to incentivize such policies? Why? What has crippled your imagination so when you can't conceive of an infinitely conceivable outcome? I understand over the last 40 years that the Democratic Party has dealt with such incrementalism, such small ideas that the norm and what people consider to be the norm is effectively that. That is just a relative position and it doesn't necessarily have to be so. The question for the left is now what? 
Will your aspirations be fulfilled in one glorious election? At this point, I would say that is probably not going to happen. The left needs to question its behavior over the past 40 years and regard itself as something fundamentally different than the Democratic Party and organized across the country with specific goals and objectives it wishes to accomplish and refuse the race to the bottom and the cowardly capitulation that has crippled the left, not just to get real things accomplished, but also has placed you in a disposition that incentivizes marginalization and disrespect. The Bernie people will fall in line. They've done so for the past 40 years, regardless of what we've done, regardless of the policies we've passed, regardless of how we've talked about them, they would fall in line. Why would they do anything differently than they've done prior? Hey, Joe Biden, millions of people have lost their health care because 10 million people lost their jobs. That number is only going to get worse. The overwhelming majority of Democrats are for Medicare for all. The overwhelming majority of populations for Medicare for all. The number has gone up nine points over the last few months. You, Joe Biden, have lost the argument. Even in states that voted for you by 30 points, Sanders won the argument and those people chose Medicare for all. And yet, right now, in the middle of a pandemic, if you ask Joe Biden to see for Medicare for all, Joe Biden says this. Let's play the clip. Are you now reconsidering your position when it comes to single payer health care? Single payer will not solve that at all. The thing that is needed is, for example, we have a whole number of hospitals that are being so stretched, including rural hospitals, they're going to need more financing. That doesn't come from a single payer system. That comes from the federal government stepping up and dealing with the concerns that they have, the reimbursement that they're going to get, how they're going to be able to move forward, and how they're going to be able to make provide all the needed help that are needed in their communities. This is an opportunity to look at re reconstructing the health care system in a way that in fact can respond more rapidly and more and more and more effectively to these kinds of crises because it's going to come again. Joe Biden may not know this, but during Obamacare, those rural hospitals actually got more cash. You know why? They got more cash because more people were able to actually pay. Meaning under a Medicare for all system, those rural hospitals would be flush with cash because more people who are going to those hospitals would be capable of paying for the services at the hospital with Medicare for all. He doesn't know that. The catch here is Joe Biden doesn't care about you. Joe Biden is still trying to push people to go to the election and help him cross the finish line sooner or not later, despite the fact that people could die in that process. Not only does he not care about you, he doesn't care about what you want, which is kind of my basic point. Of all the ideas of the left, the things that we want to get accomplished, the pain of poverty, the pain of not being able to get health care, the pain of college debt, the pain of the environment under siege for monetary gain, the pain of population destroyed by the boot of U.S. militarism, you have nowhere else to go has been the monster at the door stopping you from accomplishing your emancipatory objectives, the things that you have been philosophically and cosmically bound to get done. This party that you have associated yourself with, that you have been cowed by, that you have been effectively the politically abused spouse of, is not in line with getting the objectives that you want to get, object to, to get accomplished. If 2020 hasn't told you that, if 2020 hasn't, or 2016 hasn't shown you that, nothing will. They are diametrically opposed to our objectives. Sanders tried to make this point to Joe Biden that you need to energize people, otherwise you're gonna lose. Let's hear the clip. I frankly have my doubts. Look, I, if I lose this thing, Joe wins, Joe, I will be there for you. But I have my doubts about how you win a general election against Trump it will be a very, very tough opponent unless you have energy, excitement, the largest voter turnout in history. And to do that, you are going to have to bring young people who are not great voters. They don't vote in the kinds of numbers they should into the political process. I have my doubts. Yeah. Bernie is absolutely right. Joe Biden is getting 24% enthusiasm compared to 53% of Trump's enthusiasm. And even though people might consider Joe Biden to be electable, that's just a relative perspective. Hillary Clinton was considered inevitable, and she lost. John Kerry lost. Al Gore lost. I'm unclear why Joe Biden would be any different. If you are on the left and you want to get any real thing accomplished, you need to grab your power, grow a spine, and use the gravity of all of the pain and anguish that is in the world that you want to remedy as your strength. Listen to Lawrence O'Donnell, and I'm going to end it on Lawrence O'Donnell because he makes the point extraordinarily clear. Let's play the clip. If you want to pull the party, the major party, 
that is closest to the way you're thinking, to what you're thinking. You must, you must show them that you're capable of not voting for them. Yes, that's what it boils down to. Bob, I am on this organizing kick with you now. I think this is one of those things where we need to change how we go about this process. And we need to organize, stand strong, stop the race to the bottom, come up with political objectives that you want to get accomplished and have a litmus test on those political objectives. What do you think about that, Bob? Yeah, you know, I think the, the Bernie Sanders organizing around the presidential campaign seems like the Hail Mary to me. Of course, you want to throw the pass. Of course, we want to talk about what the play looks like and which receivers you want downfield for him to uh, accomplish that. But I think the longer strategy of what you're talking about is an economic movement across the United, something, United States. Occupy Wall Street was something before I personally got involved in journalism and politics myself. Uh, it's been nine, ten years since that movement uh, unfolded. I think that's where people need to put a lot of attention to, Jamal, because you, you need several years to build these national movements. You need people to be outside uh, in the streets to some degree to pressure these big banks. And I think you nailed the, the nail on the head talking about how so much of it's imagined and this idea that billionaires must exist and as if the government needs to only give direct payouts to corporations and to big banks. Right now, if people at home were given $10,000, $15,000 injections, which is all just fictionalized, right, Jamar, we could do that tomorrow if we collectively wanted to. I think people would be able to stay at home safely and have their basic needs met. And so I think there needs to be a bigger revolution and, and movement of people, Jamar, but it's talking about what, what's going to happen right now uh, compared to the long run. I think we have a bat to talk about tomorrow. A lot of other things. We're going to first turn our attention.